Hello, welcome back to our second session of fourth day of this faculty development program and uh, teaching mathematics in 21st century. But what I feel that uh, teaching mathematics is required so many talent and we should have to pass uh, many higher level uh, examination, acquire lot of degrees, write lot of papers, lot of books and then we can be a good teacher. But what I feel that uh, teacher can be born hi with his own talent and today I will be presenting one uh, for me is a budding scientist and uh, I should say now uh, junior scientist and I am not uh, fo forcing him to or guiding him to part, uh, uh, present any particular thing. I am giving him what he likes to present, let us present. Okay? I am giving him the freedom of whatever he want to share, let him share with us. Okay? So, I am not introducing him also, I want that he should introduce himself because he is having so many degrees, I cannot even uh, <laughs> count that. So, uh, I welcome Mandar, please have a clap for <laughs> Mandar, please. Yeah, uh, so hello everyone, uh, I am Mandar Kolatkar and uh, I am currently studying in 7th grade and I am homeschooled. So, I am passionate about space science, computer programming, electronics, robotics, mathematics and aero modeling. Uh, I am currently doing an internship at a space startup called Star Labs, where we are working on a sounding rocket that will take small satellites into space and then recover them. I am also the brand ambassador of Bhavishika program, uh, where we are going to uh, mentor students for a few years and eventually uh, the students are going to build a actual satellite. Yes, so uh, today I want to share with you how uh, 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 the Excel, uh, how using Excel taught by Chanchal Das sir uh, is very important and very uh, uh, crucial in uh, visualizing math. So, uh, let us start from the beginning. So, uh, Ever since I was uh, uh, very young, I was um, very interested in space science and I used to attend uh, space science related classes, uh, classes at Indo Science Education Trust in Pune. And also we used to have occasional visit, visits to uh, Ahmedabad uh, to the Vikram Sarabhai Space Exhibition. And then when we shifted to Ahmedabad, uh, Himanshu Pandya sir who is the director of Vikram Sarabhai Space Exhibition, he allowed, gave, gave me a chance to volunteer at the exhibition and explain the exhibits there to uh, visitors. Now, uh, there uh, scientist Satish Rao sir uh, took me under his wing and uh, we made a CANSAT and uh, we called it mini satellite because it was a very, very simplified version of an actual satellite. Now, when we were developing the mini satellite, uh, I had to go to multiple data sheets and I was programming the satellite. And uh, what I realized was math was very important in fields like electronics, aero modeling, robotics. And basically, almost every single field requires a good understanding of math. So, uh, as I progressed, uh, when I eventually reached uh, machine learning, I realized that I was not able to visualize or uh, completely understand the mathematics behind the programs. So, here Chanchal Das sir comes in and he uh, taught me how we can use Excel to understand and visualize math. So, uh, now I am going to show you few of the programs that uh, I have made in Excel. The, you can call them physics simulations. And so basically Chanchal Das sir uh, gave me challenges that can you uh, simulate uh, this field in Excel. And uh, I uh, did it, I tried and I was successful. So first let us start with a very simple example, pendulum. So I add here 
that is I have not taught it. He he learned it himself. Is not it? Yeah. Uh, so, please. Okay. So, uh, here this is a very basic example of a pendulum. Here we have some uh, parameters. Theta max is basically the relieving angle of the pendulum. So, how, how uh, at what angle it swings. Then we have the length, which is the length of the pendulum. We have the gravity and the time. Now, I have a slider here. Uh, which I can use to increase the time which uh, swings the pendulum. So, here there is a very basic oscillation equation which is giving me the angle and then uh, I am just using basic trigonometry to get the uh, uh, points of the pendulum which are these two points w 1 and the orange one. So, just a minute I will uh, plug in my mouse. Yeah. So, as I uh, click this slider, the time in will keep increasing and the pendulum will swing. So, uh, as I uh, uh, click this timer, the pendulum ke keeps swinging. So, this is a very uh, basic example of pendulum that is done in Excel. Thank you. Uh, so, here we can uh, change the parameters like uh, let us keep uh, this theta theta max to 50 and so as you can see now the pendulum is uh, at a much higher uh, deployment angle and so it is a swing arc is bigger and so here uh, this is an example of how excel is uh, excel excels at uh, visualizing math. So, here you can see uh, uh, very uh, basically I have just put in all these equations and you can see uh, all the values how they are changing as we change time. We are visualizing it as we are seeing the pendulum and we can see all the values how they are changing in relation to uh, the change in the origin pa parameters. We can also change the length let us keep it to 5 and so uh, as you can see the pendulum is much faster now. Yeah. Uh, then so uh, now uh, let's go to the next example, which is trajectory plotting. So here uh, this is basic example of projectile motion, where uh, what I have done is I have used some uh, I have modified the displacement equations to get a trajectory of an object, uh, which we can uh, change the velocity and and uh, deploy the throw angle of. So, our v sub o is our uh, v sub o is our uh, velocity uh, initial velocity and here with this slider we can change the angle. So, uh, at 30 uh, meters per second initial velocity let us start. So, currently this is at 0 degrees we can see here. So, this is uh, our uh, angle. So, let us increase it 1 degree. So, this orange line in our graph displays our trajectory. So, it is like just hugging the ground right now. Now, let us increase it little faster. So, uh, let us go to 20. So, at 20 degrees it is uh, going much uh, farther than when it was just uh, falling almost immediately at 1 degree. Now, let us increase it to 40 degrees. So, now here you can see it is going much more farther. Let us go to 45 and 50. So, now observe this uh, graph carefully. So, uh, we go to 45 and then look at this point where the uh, object is falling back to the ground. It starts coming back. So, here uh, we are all taught that at 45 degrees are uh, whatever object we throw it will go uh, the farthest, but why is this? So, this uh, trajectory example uh, show, uh, shows us. So, uh, when our angle is very less, less than 45, what is happening is that it is going uh, forward more than it is going up. So, what is happening is it is covering distance but the, it does not have time to cover that distance because it cannot gain enough height. So, it falls to the ground. 
when we go above 45, what is happening is uh, it gains height. So, it has time to go forward, but it does not have enough speed to go forward. So, it falls uh, back down and it cannot go as forward as it could when uh, we set the angle to 45. Now, when we set the angle to 45, so let us first set it to 0. Here, uh, what is happening is as it has uh, no angle, it just uh, stays there, it does not go uh, uh, forward at all. When we set it to 90, it goes exactly up and it comes back down. So, still it is. Uh, so, here at 0, it has a uh, maximum forward velocity and at, nine, uh, at 90 degrees, it has maximum vertical velocity. So, uh, uh, what is between 90 and 0? 45. So, 45 is the perfect balance between speed and height and that is why we are getting uh, our farthest distance at 45 degrees. Uh, so, now uh, this is not true in real life because there is drag. So, uh, the more optimal angle is around 40 degrees, but as this simulation does not have drag, uh, the optimal uh, angle is 45 degrees. Yes, so uh, this was the trajectory plotting. Now, let us go to 4 bar linkage. Uh, so, okay, just a minute, I will open that. One, one uh, thing I want to add here, he is master in Python programming. He can do all these things at ease, no issue for the, all those things. But I told that programming uh, will not help you in understanding the mathematics. If you can do it in Excel, then you know the effect of parameters <coughs> and then uh, he has done it. But he is master, already he was doing lot of things in and even satellite, all these movements, he was programming in Python. Uh, already he was knowing all those things, but mathematics when he started in Excel, uh, I told him that then only you will understand the mathematics behind that. And once you know the mathematics behind those concepts, then everything <coughs> is easy. Then you can go program it in any language. So, <laughs> yeah, <sir. good. laughs> and we are meeting first time. Physically, we are meeting first time. I I, I met him till today in June. First time we are meeting physical. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'll uh, show everyone the four bar linkage now. <laughs> so, uh, what is four bar linkage is? It is a, a very common mechanism, it is also seen almost everywhere. So, uh, this four bar linkage was uh, invented by James Watt, who was the inventor of steam engine. And uh, he said that a uh, steam engine is not his greatest invention, a uh, 4 bar linkage is. So, uh, basically here what we have is uh, as the name implies there are 4 bars. Now, uh, you can see uh, you may see only 3 because the uh, bar connecting uh, these 2 points which are exposed. Uh, if you can see my mouse pointer, uh, this point and this point. Uh, it is the grounded bar. So, the grounded bar does not move, it just uh, stays in place. So, uh, that is our first bar. So, let us go one by one or uh, over all bars. So, as I told you, uh, our first bar is the grounded bar. Now, let us go to the input bar. This is the shortest bar that we have. Now, this bar as I will rotate, uh, as I will increase my slider. Uh, the basically the uh, rotation angle of this bar will increase and uh, basically the uh, input bar will keep spinning. So, uh, our next bar which is right next to the input bar is our connecting bar and uh, what this bar is doing is it is connecting our input bar to our output bar and uh, next is our output bar. Uh, the output bar is uh, uh, so, as we rotate our input bar, our output bar will give, give us a swaying motion. Uh, so, just observe the output bar as I rotate the input bar. So, uh, these uh, mechanisms are very common 
in uh, let's say you uh, in your car wiper so this mechanism is there as your wiper goes back and forth uh, basically that wiper is an extension of a, your output bar so as your input bar which uh, might be connected to a motor uh, as the motor spins uh, as the mechanism works the output bar will go back and forth So you know that how it is connected to life. I I was not knowing it is uh, connected with wiper. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Very nice. Yes. So uh, the main challenge in doing this was that uh, there are almost no equations available, at least those that I can understand. So. Uh, what i actually did was uh, that as i was looking through four bar linkage i saw one gif gif that unfortunately i don't have currently but that gif depicted that uh, as the input bar rotates there is a circle with the origin at in the input bar and the uh, the di the radius of the connecting bar so just a minute i'll display those select data so this orange circle has its uh, origin at the uh, input bars uh, this point and then uh, it has a radius of the um, connecting bar so i've increased the radius a bit so you can uh, see so um Yes, just a minute. Let me select this. Then our next point, a uh, bar, is our uh, next circle. Is our uh, circle that is has an its origin on the uh, output bar. So this point, and it has a radius of the output bar. So I'll also include that. Yes. Uh, so. Uh, also i'll select this yeah so now the four bar linkage is more visible so now uh, i'll start rotating this so as you can see the circle our orange circle it moves because the input bar is rotating and our circle has its origin around the input bar so as our circle is moving Uh, you can see the point where these circles are intersecting is where our mechanism is. Uh, uh, so uh, why this was hard was so uh, we have these two points. So these are our points that are connected to the grounded bar. So they do not move. So we have uh, those two points. So we don't need to compute those. Uh, now uh, to compute the uh, location of the input bar, this point. is also easy because we can use trigonometry to uh, because we have the length of the input bar and we have the angle of the uh, input bar which we are changing with this slider so uh, we can use trigonometry to get the position of this point now so our can you tell me that what uh, formula you used and uh, how you solved uh, that so actually uh, i solved this way back so i don't exactly remember the formula but i found it on stack overflow uh, for uh, the intersection of circles so this this is a, a, whole, a whole of our formula now what is the so, name of the formula means uh, do you remember that time hmm. you explained me sometime <laughs> quadratic yeah, equation yeah so that formula is a quadratic equation And so, so, so uh, he, he he first time he got puzzled what is quadratic equation and how to solve it. That we are just today working on that uh, that complex number how came. That is also and here also one come quadratic equation involved and that equation plays that uh, whole mechanism. Yeah. So you can uh, change that next uh, uh, anything you have. Okay. Ah, uh, should I just explain the uh, why it is okay, a quadratic okay, equation? Okay. 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 So, ah, uh, now stage is yours. 
<laughs> so, what is the quadratic equation? It basically gives us uh, two outputs, correct? So, why uh, are we getting two outputs here? So, as I move, you can see the, uh, the this point which was very hard to calculate is our intersection point of our two circle. But uh, the circles have two intersection points. So, there are two possible uh, points that the link uh, linkage could be. So, uh, I am just quickly going to set this to uh, the next point. Okay. Um, Okay. So, as you can see now it is on our other intersection point of our circles. So, now as I increase the slider, our output bar is swinging back and forth just that it is below our uh, y axis in the minus uh, region. So, uh, still uh, this is uh, feasible. So, as you can see still it is rotating correctly. Uh, now, uh, let us go to another one. So, now I will be uh, displaying uh, to everyone my python uh, physics simulations that were uh, done in python. So, just a minute I will close excel. He is master in python basically his strength is python. He can do anything in Python. Okay, so uh, my project is loading up. So means what I uh, want to convey. I am not projecting Mandar. I am projecting that we can do. Our students can do if you get, get a proper opportunity how much pain his parents has taken. Can you imagine? He is not going to school from class 4, you know, and he, he will not get a degree. And a, in our society, a student without degree, a man without degree will not considered as a educated man. So, how much pain his parents are taking, is not it? And we should uh, recognize all <coughs> these sacrifices. He is also taking uh, uh, risks in his life. When he, his friends are going regularly class, he is doing research on his own. He is engaged in research. He, in uh, night 11, 12, you call him, he will answer you. So, and lot of things. Uh, I think you can tell about oh, the your satellite project also something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. So, okay. Mm. Yeah. So in Python, I have a lot of uh, simulations. So let's start with pendulum. So as I explained, this is the same thing as done in Python. So just a minute, it will start. So as you can see, uh, the basic it's going back and forth. Uh, I can change the uh, deployment angle. Now let's make it uh, 60 degrees. And you can see the uh, arc is much bigger, the swing arc of the pendulum. I can increase the length. And so, as you can see, now the pendulum is much longer. So, so every uh, parameter you can play. Is not written here. Yeah, sir. So, now let us go to uh, another simulation which is the double pendulum. Now, uh, this, this was uh, double pendulum you I think you all know the hardest uh, uh, thing to simulate. I do not know how much you have read about it. I can see now. Yeah. So, uh, this is uh, pretty hard to simulate because uh, it is an example of chaotic motion and its equations if I am able to find them. So, I will show you. So, um, yeah, just a minute, I will open these. Yes, so uh, if you can see these four lines are one equation that were broken into four lines, so they are easier to write. So, like it is a really big equation, and so I have uh, also I have, uh, uh, made this program more efficient over here. This is another program. 
and here uh, this is an example of chaotic motion and how uh, with even a little change in uh, the one minute yes he is telling repeatedly chaotic motion can you, uh, anyone explain what is chaotic motion anyone aap log bahut dynamical system bahut log pad rahe the kuch गुजराती में बोल सकता है कोई इशू नहीं हिंदी में भी बोल सकता है इंग्लिश में भी बोल सकता है कोई एनी हाउ जो 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 वी हैव सम सम माइनर चेंज इन इनपुट में कॉज मेजर चेंज इन हां यू कैन नॉट प्रेडिक्ट एक्चुअली हाउ इट मूव ओके क्वाटिक मींस इट इज रैंडमली चेंजिंग द सिस्टम व्हाट यू आर टेलिंग वो क्लासिकल एग्जांपल है एंड लेमैन आंसर इज दिस यू कैन नॉट प्रेडिक्ट इट क्वाटिक helic comet you can predict 76 years after that will repeat in earth so it is not chaotic but it is chaotic and Some chaotic motion then simulation then. is very difficult yeah yeah so uh that is correct and what sir said was also correct that mm. uh yes minor change because as it is random it keep going so even a minor change it gets magnified over time so now uh, there are three pe- uh, double pendulums here uh, which have 0.01 degree change in their angles and uh, initially they were all together and now you can see they are just going on their own path all three yeah so uh, yeah so this is how a uh, uh, chaotic motion uh, you can uh, this is a demonstration for chaotic motion that i have made So here uh, I am going to open another one. It is a uh, single double pendulum. So uh, I can show th- all the parts better. Uh, yeah. So first of all, uh, let's see a normal double pendulum how it is working. So and we can change all the values here. Uh, the angle of the first pendulum, the angle of the pendulum connected below that uh, the mass of all the pendulums so now let's increase the mass of the second pendulum let's keep it to 30 so uh, the second pendu- uh, se- second pendulum's mass is now 30 degrees and the first is 10 degrees so not degrees kgs uh, so as you can see now uh, the second pendulum isn't affected by the motion of the first pendulum as much so i'll go back to 10 uh, kg and i'll show everyone so now uh, here you can see when the mass of both pendulum is same uh, the second pendulum is affected a lot by the uh, movement of the first pendulum and also the first pendulum is affected by the movement of the second pendulum uh, now we can also change the angles of this pendulum uh, we can uh, let's say let's do both of the first one 45 and the second one 70 so now the deployment angle of both the pen- pendulums is different so the path will be different so this i also showed in the first example so even if you change the deployment angle a little the pendulum will converge from uh, its initial state so now we can also change the lengths of the pendulum so let's make the first one double of the second one uh sorry uh, the other way the second one the double of the first one so here we can uh, change multiple parameters in this pendulum and we can see the results here how the uh, motion of this pen- pendulum changes here i can add that uh, learning this uh, things we learn in our analytically when the, we use the formula we do same thing but here the leverage we are getting we can visualize the effect directly in analytical method we learn the formula but we never visualize the effect of that we have to remember it we have to uh, remember those formulas only and uh, when the uh, exam we get confused <laughs> what happens when length increases or decreases something uh, good okay yeah so uh, now let's see trajectory simulation so uh, let's not linger on this as we saw it already
so I will just quickly change all the values here. So, I uh, will run it once. So, as, as you can see here, uh, we have our uh, initial velocity to be 250 meters per second and our deployment angle at 20 degrees. So, um, I can change let us say the initial velocity to let us keep it 500. So, earlier it was 250, let us keep it 500. So, uh, remember this the uh, trajectory the object fell around 4000 uh, meters. So, now let us run it again with 500 meters per second and it just goes out of the screen and it probably landed somewhere at uh, 8500 as I have doubled the velocity. So, the, um, the uh, distance at which it fell uh, must have been doubled. So, now uh, let us change the uh, angle at which we are deploying this and I will just put these uh, this velocity 250 again. So, now as you can see as I have uh, increased the angle now it is going uh, much farther up and uh, yeah as you can see uh, more than 20 degrees it uh, falls at 5500 so it is between 5000 and 6000 now let us make uh, do 45 degrees let us see this and it falls somewhere after 6000 so as you can see here we tried above 45, we tried below 45, but 45 still it is uh, the best uh, angle. Now, uh, we are going to try trajectory simulation with drag. So, uh, the bl okay, just a minute, I will run this. Run. So, as you can see, the red one is with drag, the blue one is without. And so, with drag, the object falls much faster. So, uh, this is not uh, completely uh, finished. So, uh, this is still uh, in a uh, uh, initial phase this simulation. So, it is not completely accurate. Uh, so, there are not lot of parameters we can change that, that breaks the code. So, uh, let us just go to the next simulation. Uh, let us go to Newton's canon. So, uh, does anyone know what the Newton's canon is? I like this. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> so, basically Newton's canon. No, let them answer. Okay. <laughs> Newton's canon, do you know No. Now you can tell, yes. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Newton canon is a uh, thought experiment done by Isaac Newton. Uh, so, where he imagines that let us say we have a, a cannon and uh, we are uh, launching cannon balls from it at varying velocities and this cannon is a uh, few hundred kilometers above earth. So, it is in space and uh, so I will run this once and You can see our uh, red uh, sphere is our cannonball and our blue sphere is the earth. So, uh, Newton imagines that what will happen if we vary the velocity, how will the orbit of this cannonball around the earth change. So, ha as you can see around 5000 meters at 3000 uh, falling uh, close to the very close after uh, very early after it is the launched. Now, uh, let us do 7000, we saw 5000, let us do 7000. So, just remember where our uh, cannonball fell. Now, when we do 7000, oh, what do I mean? Okay. So, as you can see, uh, our cannonball is falling much farther uh, than it was when we had our cannonball going at 3000 meters per second. Now, at 6800 meters per second, it is going much faster. Now, let us try to do uh, 8000. 
So, as you can see it is going farther from the earth and it is uh, so it does not seem to be falling now. So, uh, once it gets back after going all around earth, uh, once it gets back to its initial point, uh, we know that it has achieved or orbiting the earth. Yes, very nicely explained, but uh, very good. So, now uh, let us. Yes, it is not going uh, uh, beyond the earth. Yeah. It is, it is again a start orbiting. So, now uh, let us do it at uh, 10,000 meters per second. And so, as you can see, uh, it just takes off and it goes out of the screen. Now, we can follow it, but uh, this actually I have a funny story to share with you here. Mm. So, uh, usually what I used to tell for this simulation, so my maximum uh, velocity that I could put it in was 10,000 meters per second and it just used to keep going. So, I used to just say that uh, now it has left the earth's orbit and it has just gone out into space. But my mother said that uh, the uh, escape velocity is 11,000 uh, meters per second, 11 kilometers per second. So, uh, this is still in orbit. So, uh, I went down to play and my as we uh, were debating. So, my mother said that uh, it will come back. So, I went down to play. I came back half an hour later and my mother was just sitting there and she said it had come back. So, it took half an hour, it went so far out, but it still stayed in the orbit of earth. So, now let us do it at 11,000. So, this I have uh, tested it and it does go uh, out of orbit. So, uh, ok, so let us just keep it to 12,000 and uh, yeah, there is earth. And so, uh, this it does leave the orbit of earth. So, it just keeps going now. Yes. So, uh, this is our Newton's cannon simulation that I have done. Uh, now, another one I did was uh, I imagined what if the earth was also moving, which actually happens the moon or uh, let us say the Jupiter when it is orbiting the sun it actually you can see the sun wobbling around because of the Jupiter's gravity. It is very slight, but the sun is affected by Jupiter's gravity. Same is with moon and uh, earth. The earth wobbles very slightly and you can see the effects of the gravity as high tides and low tides. So, the earth does wobble very slightly, but it does. It is affected by the moon's gravity. So, our, our, what I imagined, let us say both the objects are the same uh, uh, weight and uh, basically the both the objects are just the same, they have the same velocity, same everything. So, uh, I have ran this. So, as you can see here, uh, both objects keep going uh, at elliptical orbits around each other and this uh, keeps going on and so it makes a very uh, beautiful flower pattern after some time, but so uh, this is a simulation for uh, uh, Newton's cannon when uh, both the objects are uh, the same and they are moving around each other. I did try triple movement, but this is also an example of cha chaotic motion. So, when we have three, uh, three body movement, yeah, three body movement, uh, it is very chaotic. So, there seems to be some error uh, just a minute. Ok, so actually I, so uh, I have developed my own uh, vector library here uh, for the, uh, especially for this uh, Newton's Canon trajectory simulation. Mm -hmm. So, actually I made some changes to the library. So, this is an outdated version. So, it is giving one error. So, uh, let us just move on to the next one that I have done, which is Worley integration rope simulation. So, uh, you might have heard of Worley integration. No. Hmm? No. So, uh, just like Arunj Katta uh, and a uh, lot of other uh, integration uh, types. So, Worley integration is one of them. So, uh, I also am not completely able to understand. So, uh, I do not know if I am 
uh, best to explain. Uh, so, I will just show you. So, I have done a rope simulation using Verlay integration. So, basically what we can do also just a minute I uh, let it uh, start up and then I will show everywhere. So, here you can see one uh, test that is showing running. So, when I hit mm -hmm. my space bar, bar yeah. it will get paused. Mm -hmm. Now, what I can do I can spawn in when I uh, left click mm -hmm. or objects which we can ca call rotation points and they are connected with uh, blue lines. Okay. So, we have dots and lines and so uh, these dots will act as rotation points of a row and so what I am going to do I am just going to extend this row and then what I will do I will uh, left click and we have a green object which is not affected by any physics it just stays there. So, I will unpause it so all the re red uh, circles they are acting as a row. So, as you can see here, it is the rope swings around because of gravity and it bounces on the walls. Okay. So, yes sir, this is what I have done. Very good. For rope simulations. Yes. So Very good. That was it for my python simulations. Yes. Anything you want to share again? Anything else? Uh, no sir, I think that was it. I can share the satellite. Satellite, yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Try. Uh, so, just the, I mean, I, uh, it does not have the IMU. Uh, so, what do you, uh, what do you want to? Uh, so, it has the web page and all, but like the processing thing that was like, was actually moving. So, this is another version of that. So, it, uh, it does not have it the can, You can just uh, tell us uh, what you are doing. That will be fine. Okay. Okay. Mm. So, just a minute, I will just get out the satellite. Hmm. So, you have uh, seen uh, the power of uh, modeling. In when you uh, start modeling, no, you can uh, then your uh, world will open up you will uh, love to do a lot of simulation. So, uh, Mandar is uh, trying to show his uh, satellite I think. Hmm. Yes sir. Yes. Uh, so, earlier when I was introducing myself I talked about uh, Bhavishika program uh, which I am the brand's ambassador of where we are basically uh, uh, we have selected students in Maharashtra and uh, what we will be doing is we will be training them and eventually uh, uh, it will be few, a program of few years and eventually the students are going to develop an actual satellite. So, uh, one of the demonstrations there is mine which is uh, I have developed a mini satellite. So, this is just the core electronics of it. So, what we can do here is I will open my programming software which is Arduino IDE. So, basically what this satellite does is it has two sensors and these both are weather sensors. So, this uh, gives me pressure and altitude, this sensor gives me temperature and humidity. Very good. So, uh, yes I will open the program for this and so basically what this program is doing is my main controller here has an inbuilt Wi-Fi module. And uh, my code reads both these sensors and over the Wi-Fi module it sends it to a web page. And so, this is really accessible. So, an anyone can just open up uh, the link that this satellite gives and you can see it on your phone or on your laptop uh, what data it is gi giving. So, uh, this code is already uploaded into the uh, controller. So, I just open this uh, serial monitor. Okay, so I just need to select our other port that I am connected to, COM5. I select it and then uh, I am going to start the board now. So, as you can see, we are uh, show, uh, seeing dots. Basically, the it is connecting to my hotspot, it is connected to my uh, CANSAT, which is my hotspot. 
IP address which is our link and HTTP server started. Now let us open Google. So, this can be done on any browser. I paste in my link and I enter it. So, this is my web page that I have and here my satellite is live streaming all the data. So, and we can see it as a line graph and uh, we can see, uh, see the data here in these columns. So, now uh, it gives me real time data. So, uh, this is my pressure and humidity uh, temperature and humidity sensor. So, uh, if I blow on this as my breath is warm the and humid, the humidity will increase and the temperature will increase. So, currently we have a temperature which is 25 degrees Celsius and our humidity which is 80 percent. Now, I am going to blow on my sensor. So, as you can see the temperature went from 25 to 29 and the humidity went to 95. So, that is the maximum humidity we can achieve. So, uh, yeah, so as I blow on my sensor because my breath is warm and humid, we can see real time changes in our parameters. Yes, uh, so that was for my satellite. Very good. So, it's <laughs> Many other things also he is doing, he is having some RC, RC. Yeah, so uh, basically I am, as I said in my intro also, I am passionate about aero modeling. So, uh, I also, uh, when I am free, I make planes and I go fly them with my brother who is sitting there. Mm. So, uh, yeah, uh, so we both just go down and, we c and fly our uh, remote control planes. And then I am also interested in drones. So, currently I am making a flight controller for my drone. Uh, so, it is not finished yet. Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, I introduce as a boarding scientist okay. and I think I was not wrong. It, uh, Mandar has proved that. <laughs> so, with that uh, uh, we will be uh, taking a lunch break early every day what is happening we are going in lunch break very late and uh, second session third session is going back so we will break here now and uh, is it okay yes, sir. one thing so every day we are going after two so half an hour lunch break and then we will come back again okay So, it is 110, 140 we will come back. So, we can close today.